Hello everyone, uh, welcome to another Dusty Circuit, uh, KSP video, and, uh, so the last few couple of videos, we actually succeeded in actually landing on another, uh, object, so that, that being both of the, both of the moon and Minmus. That's uh, that's uh, around orbiting around uh, the uh, the home planet uh, Kerbin, but uh, but but this with this video, I really finally would like to get started on some interplanetary missions, especially since uh, since we've unlocked a lot of uh, stuff here. And I even managed to get, uh, I even, I even managed to get the, uh, the mine, the mining stuff. So we, we can actually do, uh, so, so we can actually do mining uh, either on ash from asteroids or other planets to, uh, to refuel. If, if, if we actually wanted to, if we wanted to. If I actually want to do that, uh, I, 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 I can, I have that available now, but I'm not sure if I'm really, uh, ready, at least in this video, but I guess we'll see. Well, I guess I'll, guess I'll go ahead and grab this while I'm at it. Um, it's mostly for the advanced grabbing units, which are it's actually how you uh, attach to an asteroid. But I think today, wait, let's do, let's go for, uh, I'm thinking Duna and uh, Ike. So, uh, so I'm gonna think, feel, feel like maybe I'll go with, uh, the same, maybe the same lander we used before, but I might go, I might add a, uh, so we have the, we, we have, we have the nuclear engines now, so the, that, that's available to us. Oh, but I, I also have the the restock plus mod, which actually gives you uh, this larger one, kind of a kind of as as an option. Okay, so I think what I'm gonna do now is, oh, well, I guess we'll do the our I guess we'll do our interplanetary stage first.
So I'm thinking, uh, like, I, I usually use a probe core. But, uh... I have a feeling I don't really have the really good ones unlocked yet. I think these, uh... I have a feeling this is going to be kind of a longer uh, building process, so I, I might uh, time lapse a little bit through this. But I might stop whenever I actually am uh, going to explain what I'm something or what I'm going to do. And uh, typically what I would do for my nuclear engine uh, stages, I, just, I would just remove all the oxidizer because uh, the, nuclear, the, the nuclear engines actually do not need the oxidizer, they only need the liquid fuel. But uh, in this, but, but, but because I have the the interstellar fuel switch mod, what I can do is switch it to liquid fuel, which basically turns this entire fuel tank into just a solid liquid fuel tank, where if I just remove the liquid fuel, we're effectively only using half the volume of the tank. You see, if you can kind of think of this as having like two, like think of this fuel tank as being divided into two sections, one for the fuel, one for the oxidizer. But if we switch it to liquid fuel, this entire tank is just liquid fuel, which is actually what we really, what we really want. In fact, I can show you uh, what difference that actually makes in the Delta V. So with just... With, with, with the liquid fuel oxidizer, with the oxidizer removed, we have... 2,016 meters per second. But if we uh, do just the liquid fuel, we have 3,400 meters per second. So a pretty, pretty, pretty big difference it makes. And well, these, these are the biggest fuel tanks I have available to me. So I guess I'll be building a interplanetary stage out of those. Though so really, since we're only going to Duna, I don't really think we need a whole lot. Like, this might be just enough. Or I maybe could overbuild this a little bit and maybe Duna won't be our only destination. Maybe we'll go for one of the minor planets. But this is just our, gonna be our interplanetary stage. We actually need our lander.
And of course now we actually can add a... Uh, I really am doing this just so I can add a docking port to my lander. Now that we have all the science things, let's use all the science things. Oh, and these these are these are pretty neat. Easy these are added by uh, I think it's the Inter Interstellar Extended mod. And these basically let you do some pretty, uh, pretty neat science, uh, like this, like this, can, you can do an uh, atmosphere, uh, science, and then this, well, if you land on a planet with oceans, you can, you can do science with this, but where we're going, uh, I don't think we really need that, so... At least not where we're going on this episode. Sure, if I can fit this on my my lander. I mean that technically works, but it kind of is clipping with the landing leg. Well, I guess... I guess that can work. Basically, I'm trying to merge uh, my lander with uh, my interplanetary stage that I made. This is always fun. It doesn't always like to connect. My idea for this is, uh, well at first I was just going to have the lander just be at the front of this, but then I figure it might be better to do this instead. So where this, this is my interplanetary stage, and then the lander docks to the back of it. And so basically this thing pulls the lander along. At least that way I can st actually still have, uh, some of what I'm thinking is, is well if I want to 
have this thing go to multiple different planets, maybe I could have a, a refinery at the front of this, and then I can like dock up to, a to like an asteroid or something. And now I'm just, just um, now I'm disabling crossfeed on these these docking ports, so like my um, these these engines can't use the fuel that's in my lander. And I think actually what I'll do is have one of these tanks also hold liquid fuel and oxidizer to be able to refuel my lander. Yeah, but even, but even just this stage alone is going to give us uh, 5,000 meters per second of delta V, which is nothing really to sneeze at. Though I guess I could extend that by adding uh, maybe some drop tanks. I think I'll actually, do you think I will actually go with drop tanks? And what I mean by, I'll show you what I mean by that. So it's so basically I would have more like extra fuel tanks on the outside. That basically will drain into this section and then once they're empty they'll, they'll fall they'll fall away. So yeah, just by doing that... If it would actually put the staging in the right place... Basically by doing that, we actually added like 3,000 meters per second of Delta V, at least according to this. Actually, think now I think of it, it's actually a kind of overkill for going to Duna, but. I guess I'll make these bigger. I think here we're just I think now we'll do uh do auto strut so this thing doesn't uh fall apart. I 
Okay, yes, now, uh... Well, I think before we add more weight to this, let's do... Do our, our lift stage. And for that, we, uh... Well, this might be a little uh, interesting because actually, first of all, I have the being the most powerful engines I have available as the mainsails, which are quite powerful. But it might this might be a little bit too much weight for for those. But I guess we'll find out. Oh, this might be a problem. Well, I think I'm just going to make this these longer. Oh, this is gonna- this is fun. I'm having, I'm having to reattach these, and now... It's just- the game is just going crazy, because it's... Just... likes to just f Freak the physics engine out. Trying to do what you're doing, do these- these building things. Oh, think, 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 think that worked well enough. Oh yeah, this is what I mean. Uh, so these engines aren't aren't gonna by the, at least by themselves are not gonna have the enough thrust to weight to ratio to lift this off the ground. So I might have to get pretty uh, creative with my rocket design here. Looks like with this, we just about have enough have enough thrust to get off the ground. Alright, so for good measure, I'm gonna add one more outer uh, stage. And also make sure to stage all these correctly. Oh wow, this rocket is getting big.
Okay, I guess we'll, uh... Guess we'll just see if this gets off the ground. Gotta kinda gotta love the psycho uh, over over engineering of uh of rockets and chaos and Kerbal Space Program. And so let's add a few regular struts here just for good measure. like building rockets that are with this many parts just because it can get pretty laggy. Hence why I actually have the Space Y mod installed so well and I get to the stage of the game where I'm regularly launching huge payloads into orbit I don't have to build crazy rockets like this. I can just use one giant s stage as opposed to a bunch of smaller stages. Like what I'm having to do right now. Thinking maybe of throwing the the mining stuff on this. Also, don't forget uh, your radiators. Is the the mining drill actually does make uh, heat that you have to uh, get rid of, or also also it'll stop working. Actually, both the drills and the convertotron or the refinery make heat. And. I've kind of become accustomed to using, or at least in my saves where I have more stuff unlocked, I've become accustomed to using the the RTGs and, uh, and, and as of uh, with the Interstellar Extended mod, uh, the nuclear reactors for power, but. We don't have those yet, so we're gonna have to use solar paint, make do with solar power. And I'm just gonna add some light so uh, to actually make docking uh, more easier in the event we're actually uh, on the dark side of a planet and it's hard to hard to see.
Okay, I feel like that's everything we need. Well, I'm just going to change this to interplanetary use because uh, we might be going to Duna or maybe we might go to another planet just with, with few, the fuel that we have left. So I'll put Bill uh, in the lander, or Bob in the lander, and, uh, oh wait, I, what we can do, actually I forgot to, should, I guess we should do this now, so, we actually can enlist additional Kerbals into our, or into our space program here. And the um, reason why I'm doing that is, is with, with the with the mining uh, drills. If you actually ha if you have engineer kerbals on board, it'll actually increase the speed of the mining drills. And I think it will. The more engineers you have, the faster it'll go. So I'm just I'll be uh so I'll put two on put two engineers here. And I guess I'll put Bill. Oh, I guess, uh, here goes nothing. And so we'll attempt our first launch now. We, 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 we saw this ship. Just the big, big, biggest rocket I've, uh... It's gonna be the biggest rocket I've made in this, uh, Let's Play so far. And I almost... Had a moment of oh well, maybe I should add lights to my land to the lander. Okay, now now we should be ready. Oh, I should double check our staging is correct. is really critical all these all these engines go off at the same time and that all the all the, the tanks all the uh, stages are going to separate at the correct time And as soon as this loads in, I'm going to uh, launch it. But, but thanks to the magic of editing, you are not going to have to sit through these loading screens. But I, but I do. Okay, I just did a quick save just in case something goes wrong. Very 
low lift off, which might not be a good sign. I made a little bit of a mistake. I guess I'll show you that now. Oh, so these nose cones, when well, we have liquid fuel in them, and what we need for the, well, for our, our lift stage, we need liquid fuel and oxidizer. And same for these little nose cones. I mean, I have a bad feeling this is not going to have enough. Uh, it's not going to be able to get into orbit, but I guess we'll try. I so I'll have to try and error this. also be slow because uh, the game is lagging. I th think of actually, if I look at the time up here, it's actually going by like one second every two seconds right now. So I think the game actually is lagging. I also forgot to mention I have the so the reason that like like the engines sound different than they do in stock KSP and also the reason the plumes look different is I I have the waterfall mod which actually makes the plumes sound and look a bit more realistic. 
kind of akin to, uh, oh no, kind of akin to KSB2, and I was afraid that was going to happen. Because of, because I put the, probably because I put these very low. Well, if I had the Separatron rockets, I would make you be using those, but I don't. I guess we had to move these so they're these decouplers so they're like at this level rather than down there. Okay, editing this thing proved to be very frustrating. As oh, I was trying to basically move these decouplers so that they're higher up on the rocket stage so that basically when the when they're they're uh their like integrated separatron goes off it basically like the stage gets pushed like the middle of the stage gets pushed away rather than the bottom and so basically what happened was it like this, the bottom of the stage would move away but the top would not would not and then it would end up running into my rocket and destroying it Okay, I'm, so I'm gonna try see if how this goes, but if it doesn't work, I might resort to some cheats, but hope it doesn't come to that, but I m might have to. My goodness, this thing takes forever to load in. to it start throttling down right about now, but since you're about to lose engines, I'm going to stay throttled off. That's better. I mean, they still exploded, but it's 
least they exploded away from my rocket this time. And we are still gaining speed. Good. This is where it's going to get fun, uh, doing gravity turns and uh, rockets this big is, uh, can be uh, difficult. But I guess, I guess it might be a little easier because it's at least, with, with least this is a, like a bit like a big fatter rocket as opposed to a taller spinny spindly rocket. So it's like the effect of the atmosphere trying to flip you over isn't quite as bad. Though it still is a uh, prevalent you have to be careful with your gravity turn. So far, stage separation is going so much better. Oh, game freeze. Oh, that scared me. Uh, as you can see here, uh, actually you can see the plumes of the engines actually kind of getting, uh, spreading out. It's the effects of, uh, going into, into, going, uh, into a thinner, thinner atmosphere and dispensing into the vacuum of space. We're doing a much more gradual gravity turn because we still need to get, make sure we're still going up uh, and then out of the atmosphere before we actually totally turn over to horizontal. Oh, and we lost more engines.
Okay, this is just like we are not going to have enough. We're not going to be able to get into orbit with these with these engines, and we're going to have to now rely on our nuclear engines to get into orbit, which doesn't look good. And we're not even out of the atmosphere yet. to go up. Okay, we're now down to our nuclear engines. Okay, this is not good. We're not going to make it into orbit. So, I guess we need maybe one more stage. Either that or get rid of some of those, some of that extra fuel. I'm probably actually, it's probably overkill for going to my intended destination anyway. And this rocket is just getting insane. Might not might be a bad idea or bad choice, but well, I can't add more tanks to this section because of this that would run into this. So thinking maybe we add a drop tank. Can be out of a drop tank to, to each of these. And let the fuel go through this. And then into there. And some of these separate. So in squeeze we we've gotten rid of all of these. This will detach, then followed by this one. And then uh 
Wait, this, these are on the wrong stage. See exactly why checking your staging in KSP is important. Okay, so the, 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 this separates and then that. And then this. So I guess we'll see, maybe we'll see if this made the difference that we need, or maybe it didn't. You know, so we're kind of reaching the limit of how much, like, stuff we can actually fit in the VAB here. I mean, I could, he could add more to the outside, but it's actually getting difficult to pan around. Yes, we'll give this a try, but if it does, if skill can't get into orbit, I might just have to remove some of the weight from my interplanetary stage. Which I don't really want to do, but I might have to do that. Yeah, I guess, I don't know how many launch attempts we're at, but I guess so whatever this one is.
seems like we're making it farther than we did before, at least. Which is always, which is good. So I'm just not going to start turning until my apoapsis gets to uh, about 40,000. So we really don't have good or we really, really have bad thrust to weight ratio with this rocket. Like I feel like I went from the acceleration of a like a Lamborghini to like a a freight train here. drop tanks so I had to watch those when for when they run out. Oh 
Well, actually, I think I'll wait till we get to a closer to Apple Apsis. are done right now. Okay, we really don't have good acceleration here, so I guess we're going to have to point point upwards quite a lot so if we were to maintain our, our height. So I gotta tip up a lot. Okay, can we get the rest of the way into orbit with our nuclear engines? Probably not. 
Oh, we might. We just might. Oh, and there's orbit. Okay, uh, we're running into some issues. Oh, I'm just gonna do that to make sure we don't those don't blow off. Yes, I, I've been, I mean, we're basically in orbit. We're just in the atmosphere because our very slow rocket couldn't quite get into orbit before it fell back and started to fall back in the atmosphere, but we're really just skimming it. And we'll just go to a time warp to periapsis. Or apoapsis, I mean. And then get the rest of the way into orbit. There we go. So I'm going to quick save here. Okay. Well, because this mission is really, really kind of is getting drawn out. I um, feel like it would be good to maybe stop here. Maybe stop this particular video here. Or... So I kind of I kind of want to show some of the, f the challenges and failures that went into actually getting this into orbit, but I'm going to be significantly cutting down the video time because of all the time I spent having to wait for the game to load and uh, my multiple uh, failed launches of this thing but I think in the next video I think we're going to be sending this out to well my plan was maybe to go to Duna with this but I'm thinking uh Thinking maybe we go to Duna and then maybe we could go to one of these one of these minor planets out here. Maybe if it's dictated from for even more science. And then maybe one of our next missions could be either a Jewel 5 or a Sarnus 5. Well well that meaning we 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 send a a ship that can like basically it's care basically a mothership with a like five other landers like attached to it for each of the five moons of each of the gas giants, and then you just separate off each of your landers to go on each of the each of their respective moons, or each of the moons they were designed to land on, and then and then rendezvous with the mothership, but. It's kind of beyond the scope of this video, but, uh, 
Yes, that's how we'll end this here. And uh, we, even though we just barely managed to get into orbit, we did get into orbit, which mat which is what matters. And uh, so, so that's in the next video, we're actually gonna send this somewhere. And uh, so, thank you all for watching. This has been me, Dusty Circuit here. Uh, with, with another uh, another Kerbal Space Program video. And if you if you liked what you saw, remember to leave a like, comment, share, and subscribe. And if you want to see my next videos, you should hit the bell for notifications. And peace out. Bye.